Hi and welcome to our video series in which we are looking at the new features of Grasshopper within the new and shipping version of Rhino 6. You will see a list of the features we are going to explore here. And in this short video, we are going to look at Maelstrom, which we can get either by writing it in the canvas or by going to transform morph and then Maelstrom. So um, the icon of the component actually explains a bit about itself and we can see here that we have um, six inputs that we can use. Um, so what I'm going to do first is to create the geometry that I want to deform in that shape. Um, this geometry, it has to be said that it shouldn't be a curve, it should be either surface or solid. So I'm going for a solid um, that I will be creating in Rhino which I will create this way and then I can just for the purpose of this explanation I'm going to make it look like that just to make it easier to understand what is going on and the logic behind it um, so I'm going to create it that way and then I'm going to array polar uh, by using the center here which is the zero zero three iterations like that so I'm going to assign this geometry that I created in Rhino into Grasshopper I'm gonna set multiple geometries and then uh, I'm going to connect that to the input geometry. So just as a quick explanation before I continue, we will need a geometry, as I explained, it should be a solid or a surface, uh, a plane, that we want this deformation to go around, first radius and a second radius, which I will explain what they do uh, in a minute, and an angle and a rigidity toggle. So that's a Boolean that we will see what does it do um, in a bit as well. Um, so I'm going to connect the geometry now um, that I created here. We will see that this has changed and we want to know why. Um, so I, I want to hide my original geometry for now also here in Grasshopper. So the plane basically here it says XY. You can put any other plane just by writing the plane command. Here actually XY works for me. So I will leave it as is. Um, then the first and second radiuses so I just have to keep in mind the units that I've been drawing in so I, I should also put the sliders accordingly so I can see the effects of it not too small not too big uh, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna start from something like 20 and end with something like 60 roughly and then adjust accordingly so I can see here that something is going on something is changing in this but I want to understand what is changing and what's the logic behind it so I can have more control um, more control with with my design basically uh, and to do so it's going to be very helpful to create actually a circle that's shown showing me what what's this radius is changing where's the circle um, that it is changing um, so if I drew two circles components here and I'm going to connect each of them to one of the radiuses I have um, also the plane is the same plane as I have which is XY so I don't need to worry about that so now I can see both circles which is this one and this one um, <coughs> so I see when I'm changing this what's going on and when I'm changing this one, what's going on? Before I go into more explanation about that, I have to look at the angle as well. So here I have an angle which is defined by radians. Uh, if you are more comfortable with degrees, you just have to set it on degrees. And let's set this at the moment. I have this uh, parameter, which I'm going to start from 360, but I'm going to set it to 90 just for the explanation at the beginning. So I'm going to show the original geometry here for illustrative purposes as well. So now I can see that my inner circle starts a bit before the beginning of the geometry 
from in relation to the center of course because the circles is starting from this center which you use for the array as well so if I am to increase the circle to roughly at the beginning of my geometry and same for the bigger one to the end of my geometry like that now I can have a look at the angle the angle here is 90 and this angle actually limits the beginning and the end basically of your rotation into these amounts of degrees so because this is 90 I can see that this deformation is happening in 90 degrees um, only in within 90 degrees um, capacity basically so it starts from here which is the beginning position of my geometry it rotates like that and it ends there in 90 degrees so um, same for the rest as well so if I am to change this to 180 instead of 90 I will see that my geometry is rotating all the way to 180 degrees within these two circles at the moment because these two circles actually ba uh, ha have have been uh, sat um, have been to, to the beginning and end uh, of the geometry but if I am to change it to make this slightly bigger I'll see that the deformation will start from the borders of my inner circle and everything before that is not going to change although it does exist but it's not going to change so if I am to hide this one I'll see that this thing is there the beginning of it but it's not being deformed um, if I am to reduce the bigger circle this way I will see also that the change is happening to the parts of the geometry that is between these two radiuses, these two circles, which is quite interesting. So if I am to make this much bigger, like that, this is another point. So I can see that the deformation starts from the smaller radius that I made, but because the bigger radius is actually longer than my original geometry so because my original geometry does not reach the end of the border um, anymore so this is being projected to imaginary um, to an imaginary uh, geometry that should be the continuation until I reach 180 degrees which is going to be here but because my geometry doesn't reach the second radius so it's just being projected but it doesn't really exist at the moment but if I am to increase the length of this geometry I will see that so if I am to show my geometry in Rhino and if I am to change this um, if I used control point for now to change it only from one side if I push it like that then this will be projected to the to the end of the degree that I have defined from the beginning um, and we can see that like this as well however if I am to reduce the diameter again when I'm looking at this geometry I will see that it's actually co continuing like the deformation of the geometry for 180 degrees I hope that this is a bit clear it, it can be confusing um, and then we have the rigidity toggle which it's just a boolean basically boolean toggle that can set to true or false and then it defines um, the shape of deformation so whether we are applying the logic with while deforming the actual geometry or while keeping the geometry rigid the way it is so if I set this to true this is what's going to happen and then I can play with it but I can see it's not going to be deformed is gonna stay rigid uh, so that's what this will add um, I hope that this was helpful and um, I hope that you enjoyed it and thanks for listening